Traffic Improvement along Civic Center Boulevard and Veterans Memorial Circle. Ben Moody, you're back up again. You did the fun ones there. This one, um, everybody um, is probably familiar with the intersection it is uh, directly outdoor, adjacent to us here. Um, item before you tonight um, is an informational deal plus um, a request for an approval to install um, stop signs for north and southbound traffic and then also adds um, crosswalks. The, uh, the background on the story, as, as most are familiar, is that there's a new courthouse that's being constructed and almost um, ready to open here in the next month or so. Um, when this uh, the courthouse, it's, it's a state project, state-funded project that's administered by the state, so the city has had um, limited um, oversight on the project. Um, a little bit that the city has um, been involved uh, initially was with the encroachment permit to change the driveways and access um, access onto the property, um, where we've talked about um, a traffic analysis. And with that traffic analysis, they came. Uh, there was a proposal uh, based on the project that we add a, a designated left turn for eastbound traffic going east to north. Um, installing it didn't meet the criteria for signals due to the volume of traffic is what the what the study um, put out and then also um, but it talked about how you know with the four-way stop to help with the traffic flows um, staff wants to see a, um, a crosswalk there with a with a light with a, um, a street light on the southeast corner to help the crossing there so you know, I'm really here for, for information to help um, give you any more background on it, but the nuts and bolts of the recommendation tonight is to give approval to put that stop sign in and then to mark the crosswalks. All right. Any questions of staff? Cleveland. Yeah, thank you very much. Just gathering thoughts. In the past, um, experiences uh, when an area where everybody is so used, the citizens of just being able to drive through, um, it has been found that at least at first, for actually sometimes an extended period of time, um, flashing red light, uh, large temporary um, stop signs of that larger nature to wake people up that there's a stop now there. Um, have been installed by other uh, jurisdictions to make sure that people actually stop and some of them still don't even see it. It's you know amazing, but uh, um, is, are any of those types of uh, actions and procedures going to be done at least at first for a few months so people can actually wake up at that? There's a stop sign now in those areas. Yes, definitely. Um, in the past, when we've installed a new stop sign, similar areas like on Stabler Lane at, um, at Jamie or uh, Franklin Avenue at Park, um, we've put changeable message board signs up, and um, um, also we've we've used some flashing beacons and we put notices out to the uh, the public and the radio um, to try to to try to give people attention that something's flashing. Hey, this is a new stop sign, to, and leave those in place. Um, for a while to get people used to that that new stop in the properly market um, you know we're, we're really trying to uh, put the double the double uh, markings in to kind of show the direction markings and the stop and the new the new white the new striping it should really stand out so uh, I know people might be looking around for, with the new courthouse and where to go but we're going to try to uh, try our best to let people know that we're installing this stop sign and we're and also, there will be a stop sign in the median and on the shoulder due to the multi-lane. Right. And just past experience, I've seen that those big red signs, double sides, some for a period of time even, also will help to assist. So just let the public know. Mr. Buckman? Ben, um, I mean, really looking at the traffic flows on uh, Civic Center Boulevard, Understanding this study uh, probably projected some usage um, at the courthouse, but with the reality of what courthouses draw, the amount of activity around them, uh, with all the other uses in this area, um, I really think this was an underdeveloped study. 
I mean, that's my, my personal uh, opinion of this. Uh, this is probably one of those intersections in Yuba City that has had a, a frequency of uh, uh, minor collisions, ones that would not show up in the injury category, therefore driving uh, greater warrant for uh, a light controlled intersection. Uh, but nonetheless, there's, there's been a tremendous number of uh, fender benders and, and everything else in that uh, intersection. I just look at, at what the foot traffic uh, will be in the, in the area. Um, it will increase given the inadequate number of parking spaces that I see for this project. <clears throat> parking will be on Pool Boulevard alongside the uh, park. Um, individuals are going to and probably most likely the attorneys um, running to and from court uh, will be the ones looking for the shortest path of resistance to the location that they need to arrive uh, to not uh, face the wrath of the sitting judge for being late. Um, the, the north side of that intersection lacks uh, crosswalk delineation or any type of marking. Um, and I can tell you that, that based on kind of how they use Second Street currently um, and the amount of people that just boldly walk across streets outside of crosswalks, uh, that any guidelines that we can give um, individuals that are going to and from that courthouse, I think, would be uh, greatly helpful. Uh, and I see that as also a limitation of liability for some of the drivers that may be in that area. People will cross from from the uh, on that north side of the intersection. They're going to do it uh, with or without the, the crosswalks. Uh, so that would be one of my recommendations. The other one would be uh, that we look at as much uh, adjacent parking as we possibly can. Again, absent uh, going into uh, patterns that uh, would limit directions of travel on um, on the roadways around it and just making sure that we have proper signage uh, directing individuals uh, to, to adequate parking locations. I'd like to, to see the city of Yuba City enter into some type of, a, of an arrangement with Sutter County for the north of the courthouse and south of City Hall here to be able to improve the narrow strip of land into some type of a, of a parking configuration that would limit then uh, the amount of of traffic and cross traffic uh, that may be uh, at that intersection. North of that, uh, I can see a, a relief point uh, on the north side of City Hall here uh, that's not on this map as, as a point where uh, coming out of City Hall, uh, because of the, uh, at the increased traffic load, that may be something that would have to be addressed at a later time with right hand type turn only and, and uh, uh, no left-hand turns from Civic Center into City Hall. They'd have to come around the, probably the back way to limit uh, the, the uh, conflicting movements with the increased number of traffic. But those would all be things that have to be looked at based on collision histories that are gonna come out of it. Not every person that goes to a courthouse is a good driver. A lot of them are there for a the very reason. <laughs> So my understanding, right, with Sutter County regarding the strip of land, currently they're they're investigating um, turning that into a, um, a, a a pay lot. So basically, they're looking at what it would take to develop it and then um, put in parking meters to um, to have people come in and make a little revenue generator for them to do that. So right now they're in discussions with that. Um, the city um, kind of anticipation of. Staff has been working a couple different options because we also feel that there might be um, it under parked. Uh, we don't know how much really until it, it gets going. And so there's there's different um, options that we're, we're alternatives that we're talking about and discussing. Um, as you've seen, we've, we've been adding red curb around the different areas to kind of um, make people abide abide the rules of where they're supposed to park and not park, um, putting in signage in, into the police department and into the city hall parking lots to kind of reserve those areas for customer parking. Um, we, we've kind of thrown out there an idea of, of um, a one-way parking, maybe to, 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 grab, to obtain some additional parking stall, stalls on Veterans Circle. 
um, in different ideas, but staff really um, would like to see um, it up and going and how we could coordinate with um, maybe the jury selection of the courts and how that plays in before we, we um, get to involve and what we find out what we need to do to install that. What, what a unique concept to raise revenue for a county, a pay lot and then summon jurors to the courthouse, you know, prospective jurors at like 80 at a time. That's 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 so they can spend their fifteen dollars a day <laughs> on parking. <laughs> yeah, through the mayor, I had some of the same comments that the vice mayor had. Uh, simply looking at not the stop sign, I, I think it's a great first step solution. And I believe, if correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the uh, parking also going to be parked at the church? Do they have an agreement with the church to park on certain weekdays as well? I, I have not heard that. I've heard some discussions about the mall. If that's, I don't know what, if that's still that's forward. That's, at least that's what the rumor was. So Maybe there was a rumor about the yeah, mall. Yeah, so I was with the church. So I was thinking if they're going to be walking across the street, uh, now there's no traffic signal, which they can press a button, has walk, and then all of a sudden the traffic moves the other way. So now if you've got court on Mondays or you've got jury duty, you know, you're going to have crop people, pedestrians walking all times of the day. So now this is going to come an area of Civic Center where you want to try to avoid and try to go down uh, Stabler Road and not even come this particular way. Uh, so I think not only for traffic flow, but for pedestrian safety, I think we really do need to take a look at a, a traffic signal light with, you know, crosswalks where you can press and it's, you know, tells them a certain amount of time to walk. So otherwise, I, I, I can assure you that this whole intersection is going to be nothing but a bottleneck. So something to look at. I just wanted to go go ahead and add to the, the comments that it's not only going to be the Civic Center area because of that traffic, it is going to get bottle-logged as, as we go more into using that new courthouse. Um, but Stabler Lane is already feeling the compact um, uh, of all the cars coming through. And I think that's also going to feel that traffic coming through as people are trying to avoid Civic Center because of the rush um, at certain times as well. So I think that entire block from Butte House, Stabler, um, Highway 20 in that area, I think that whole area is going to have to really um, be reviewed and analyzed um, in this traffic study. Um, I think we're pretty much premature in the current traffic study. So something to think about. And some of the one-way traffic that you mentioned with the um, Memorial Circle, it might not be a bad idea to consider to help that flow. Mr. Mayor, may I provide just a couple points of clarification? Because to a person who's watching this for the first time, possibly from the public, it would give the appearance that poor planning took place. And I, and I just want to be clear with regard to the state of California and their approach to locating uh, their government facilities. They, they do not go through the city. They do not go through the county. Uh, they may work, say they work cooperatively. They provided us with a traffic study. Um, I don't think that we set the scope of work for that traffic study. They just provided it to us, said we just needed a traffic signal. If this would have gone through the normal entitlement process, this facility would have been required. It, any other facility like this uh, is required to pay approximately $250,000 in impact fees to the city. Of, of that, approximately $175,000 would have gone to traffic. Those funds would have then be, been used by Mr. Moody and the Public Works Department to make improvements such as the signal that was referenced. Uh, this doesn't mean that we're not going to do those things should they be necessary, but it, it puts us somewhat behind the eight ball um, to have not been uh, and essentially allowed to be part of the planning process, um, but to just have to do this after the fact. So I uh, appreciate the constructive feedback. I uh, appreciate you not uh, and you being understanding as well and not beating up staff. Uh, that would be me and saying, why didn't you do a better job with this? So we'll, we will make the most of this as it, as it opens. And uh, any more suggestions? I know Public Works has done a really good job of identifying options for additional parking. And should those be necessary, we'll absolutely bring them back with a recommendation. Thank you. As you mentioned, that normally impact fees would have been collected on a project this size to offset these. 
So in the future, if a traffic signal is warranted at that location, the city would have to pay for that. Is that correct? The, yeah, you are correct, sir. So we can't go back to the state and say, you owe us. <laughs> Unless the gentleman who wants to auction off the pie says, says we can. <laughs> Then, then I uh, and we have reached out to other entities. So we haven't just said, "Oh, they've said no to us." Uh, we've reached out to a number of different communities that have had uh, courthouses built, uh, and they've shared with us similar circumstances. Right. Thank you. And just make one little comment here. It's, it's from uh, when the state came to the county and said where they wanted to put it. We we need a new courthouse system, and that's just no question. We weren't even on the. Uh, list of uh, setting aside we were on that list where we are getting that courthouse for you guys no matter what they came in and said where they wanted it period uh, the arguments went on well why don't you put it here why don't you know so, no, we want it there and after the third time of them saying that everything went quiet we just said okay uh, so that location is by their choice and they knew they could get away with uh, everything that they are doing so that's our state of california again exerting its um it's uh, power and strength over local governments and not taking care of their responsibility, which is quite common. Well, and to your point, I think that uh, this was the last courthouse that was selected to be built in our state for some time. And if you look at the other courthouses mm -hmm. that were built around the state, they were very uh, ostentatious compared to what we have here. This is a the stripped down version, which we have, yeah. we're fortunate to have a new facility. Don't don't get me wrong, but this was at the tail end, and we don't have near the amenities that some of the other courthouses do. So, yeah, I, a comment to that. I think Yellow County just opened <coughs> their new courthouse. I think it was last week or the week before. It's so beautiful. it's of course <laughs> absolutely beautiful. All right. Um, so at this point, um, I would entertain a motion. We have. Uh, Two uh, resolutions that need to be adopted. So moved. All right. A motion in a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Everybody's said aye. Opposed, nay. Enough. <coughs> so uh, unanimously approved. Item number 